this video we will talk about set operations and the properties associated to it certain laws associated to these operations so the first operation we will talk about is called union in case you have two sets in case you have two sets a and b you can talk about the union of these two sets now what does this union stand for so if you may think of an example like science section in your school suppose there are some students who opt for mathematics and some students opt for biology say 30 students are opting for maths and 50 students are opting for biology and there is no option available to opt for both the subjects so you can either if you're in the science section you can either opt for mathematics or you can opt for biology if that is the scenario then if i may ask you what is the total number of students in your class in this class the clear answer would be 3 30 plus 50 that is 80 because 30 students are the students who are opting for mathematics and other science subjects and 50 biology and other science subject but you don't have an option uh, for for them to opt for both the subjects so you cannot have any person in this class that that is opting for math mathematics as well as uh, biology so what you have done actually here in finding out the total number of students is you have united these two sets so what you can say is that a is the set of students students opting for mathematics and b is the set set of students opting for biology when we think of union what are we essentially doing when we are thinking of union we are thinking about all the elements that are in either in a either in a or in b you unite them so a union b essentially is the set so I'm going to give, you, give it a set notation. It's the set of all students who either opt for mathematics or opt for biology. biology. Okay. So that set is the union of A and B. That's the sense of union. For example, suppose E is the set of all even natural numbers. So that is in in the form of set notation, I can say it's a set of all two times n, where n is a natural number. Because now if I start putting, giving it natural numbers, so 2n will be 2, 4, and so on and so forth. Similarly, let's say O is the set of all odd natural numbers. So that will be the set, we can say 2n minus 1, such that n belongs to the set of natural numbers, n, capital N. So 2n minus 1 now, when you will start put giving it natural numbers, one, two, three, so on and so forth. The moment you will put one, you will get two into one minus one. That is equal to one. So that's why the notation two and minus one. When you will give n, e, n the value two, you will get two into two, that is four minus one. That will give you three. That is another odd number and so on and so forth. What if I unite these two sets? So if I unite these two sets, that is union E and O, set of all even numbers, set of all odd numbers. So what am I doing? I am uniting all even numbers, two, four, six, eight, so on and so forth, even natural numbers, and one, three, five, seven, so on and so forth. When I'll be uniting them, that means I'm talking about all the numbers which are either in A, in E or in O. So either it should be an even natural number or it should be an odd natural number. That means I'm actually talking about all the natural numbers for that matter. This is the set of all X belonging to capital N because at the end of the day it will be a natural number such that X belongs to E or X belongs to X belongs to E or X belongs to O which essentially gives you the set of all natural numbers. In both the examples that I gave you the two sets that we looked at were 
exclusive of each other. That is, there was nothing in common. We were talking about sets like these, which have nothing in common. So A, all the mathematics students, B, all the biology students. And when you combine the two, you get similarly E, all even natural numbers, O, all odd natural numbers. When you combine the two, you get all the natural numbers. Now let's understand the notion of common. So there can be a scenario when you have common things in sets. For example, if I may take A as the set of all even natural numbers less than or equal to 20, which means that I'm talking about the numbers 2, 4, so on and so forth till 20. And B as a set of even natural numbers between 10 and 20. So we're talking about 10, 12, 14, so on and so forth. Again, including 20. Now, if you see, you do have some common elements in the two sets. Now, what are these common elements? It's pretty clear to see that this set, which is even numbers up to 20, it also consists of a consists of even numbers between between 10 and 20, which means A consists of all these numbers. So the situation is that B is a set which is totally inside A because 10 to 20 even numbers are here and they're part of A also. And the remaining certain numbers are just part of a and not a part of B. But there are many numbers, they, all the numbers that are in B, they are a part of A. So it's like you have a box of things and you have common things in two boxes. So the common part is this B and the remaining other things are here in A, but A consists of all the common part as well. Now suppose C is the set of natural, even natural numbers between 10 and 20 and D is the set of even natural numbers between 5 and 15. If that's the scenario, then again, do we have anything common between C and D? Well, perhaps yes, because C consists of numbers 10, 12 till 20, the even number and D consists of 6, 8, only the even numbers till 14. So we do have certain common things. What are those common things? The common numbers are clearly, the common numbers are 10, 12, and 14. So if I may now look at it from a diagram perspective to have a clearer understanding, then if this is say C, and this is say D. This portion that you see here, this is a sort of portion which is common to both. So which means I can put the elements which are common to both. I can put those elements here because it's in C also, it's in D also. The other elements in C would be 16, 18, 20. And in D, it would be 6 and 8 the even numbers. Now let's talk about the notion of union once again. If now you want to unite C and D, that is C union D, C union D, then you would take up all the elements that are in C, either in C or in B. So elements in C, 16, 18, 20, or in D, six and eight. But what I've just written here is, only C and only D. What about these elements which are in both? Are they not a part of the union of these two sets? Logically, it should be because these elements are actually in both. So when you just think of the elements in C, they should be included. Or when you are thinking of just the elements in D, they should be included. So they would be a part of this set. What I'm trying to tell you here is that in case you have some common elements, so let's take when you are talking about A union B, it is the set of all the X's belonging to the universal set. Here in our example, the universal set was the set of natural numbers, but it can be any universal set. X belonging to the universal set such that 
x is either in a or x is in b but there can be a situation when you have certain x's certain elements which are in both so or both must be included when you are uniting two sets logically it makes sense so or both is intuitively a part of a union b whether you write it or not in mathematics when it's written a union b it is automatically even if you write down it's a set of all x's in a or x's in, in uh, all the x's that are in b or both is automatically a part of this set in fact if you want to mention that it's not a part of this set if you don't want the common elements then you will have to mention it that they, these should not be the elements in both okay so what is union of a set union of two sets is essentially the set of all elements which are either in set a that is uh, one of the sets or it is in set b automatically or in both is a part of it there are some certain properties or laws that are associated to union of two sets the first property whether you look at look at union as a union b or b union a it is the same thing it will not mean something else because both mean that set of elements which is which are in a in a or set of elements which are in b so it's a set of all the elements which are either in a or in b or both is automatically a part of it number 2 if you unite a set with itself what will you get if you unite a set with itself so that means it would be just the set of all the elements in a so that means it is a so by definition it means it is just a now very interesting to see is that union of three sets if you take a union b union c parenthesis is out here b union c so i am uniting a with b union c which is already united whether i take union like this or i unite a and b first so the parenthesis is here and i take the union of this with c it's going to be the same thing if you have say this is the set a let's look at it diagrammatically it's easy to understand diagrammatically these diagrams are called venn diagram and when you have a certain law which is always happening then venn diagrams are very easy it's an easy way to understand things but yes they are also very easy they come very handy when you want to check out for a counter counter example that there can be a counter to this then also when diagrams do help but there are times when you would want to do proofs of certain theorems using axiomatic set theory not just the diagrams so coming back to this property suppose a is this b is this c is this i'm going to mark certain sets here so we are talking about union so a union b union c so let's mark b union c so you are uniting the entire b with entire c they do have something in common also that's good enough but it will be a part of the union now you are uniting this with a a is this part now you're uniting this entire thing with a so ultimately you have the entire portion that you have here that's the union let's look at the right hand side now and are both the sides equal let's see so let's first now unite a union b so this circle unites with this b circle they do have common parts and it's a part of a union b now you're uniting it with c this c blue part with the gray part you'll get the entire gray part here that means you are getting the entire thing so no matter how you take the union which parenthesis you take first it will not make any difference you're getting the entire union so this means this operation is commutative in nature this operation is associative in nature next property or law if you unite a set a with the entire universal set u here stands for the universal set what will you get a is a part of the universal set itself so if you want to look at it diagrammatically suppose this is the universal set it could be set of real numbers set of natural numbers and a is a part of this set if you unite a with the universal set what will you get you you will get the entire universal set itself so u gives you u itself number 5 if you unite a with a null set the set which contains no element it will contain 
it will be a set of the elements which are either in a or in phi there is nothing in phi so they will just be it will be the set of all elements which are in a the sixth statement that i've written here the sixth law that i've written here is that if b and you see this symbol out here this symbol is called subset if b is a subset of a what does it mean i will talk at length about it later on but for now you must look at this symbol as a symbol of containment so when i am writing this symbol b this symbol a that means b is contained in a this symbol essentially is telling you b is contained in a now i am going to take you through an example here so say a is a set of even numbers natural numbers less than or equal to 20 so what all will it include it will include 2 4 6 so on and so forth till 20 the even natural numbers b suppose is a set of even natural numbers between 10 and 20 so they it would include the numbers 10 12 14 so on and so forth till 20 there is a relation between a and b what is that relation all the elements that i see in b they're already there in a they're a part of a so it is almost like if i diagrammatically show you a is the set which contains all even natural numbers less than or equal to 20 so it contains 2 4 6 8 and b is a set of even natural numbers that between so 10 12 14 16 18 18 and 20 these are the numbers which are a part of b and also there are part of a so what you see here is that the a b is totally contained inside a and the sixth statement is basically telling you that in case this is the kind of scenario you're looking at so you have say a box containing few things and there's another box containing few things certain things are in this box but since this box is in box a also so whatever is in b is a part of box a as well so this box b is contained in box a in that scenario if you would want to unite the two set what all the elements which are either in a or in b or in both so if you observe what you would be getting as a result is the entire a so all the elements that are in a or in b or in both that would be entire a so that's what this statement is telling you that the union of a and b is equal to a itself the entire set a that's happening because b is already contained in a so these are the laws or properties which are true for union as an operation